Hello, and welcome to this overview of Orca 3D. My name is Bruce Hayes. I'm a naval architect and director of the team that develops and supports Orca 3D. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of Orca 3D, a marine plug-in to the Rhino modeling system. Rhino is a very powerful, easy to learn, and inexpensive system, and has become very widely used in the marine industry, among others. We chose to develop Orca 3D as a plug-in to Rhino so that users would have the naval architecture tools that they need in the same software environment where the rest of the design process is carried out. This means that you can spend your time designing, not switching back and forth between programs with different user interfaces and file formats. Orca 3D consists of four modules, which I'll describe briefly here before demonstrating them. The first module of Orca is hull design and fairing. In this module, you'll find methods and tools for creating hull and other surfaces such as foils, superstructures, decks, and transoms. Tools for defining and creating sections through those surfaces such as stations, buttocks, and water lines. Tools for editing the control points and control net that define those surfaces. And various forms of specialized output including lines plans and offset tables. The hydrostatics and stability module allows you to compute upright and rollover intact hydrostatics. The initial condition may be defined by a flotation plane, a weight and center of gravity, or some combination of these. Multiple conditions may be computed at one time, down flooding and other points of interest may be tracked, and output can be generated in a report format or in a CSV file suitable for reading into Excel. Since ORCA computes most of the hydrostatic quantities from the surface mesh rather than stations, it is both very accurate and comfortable with shapes that are not simple yacht or ship type hulls. The resistance curve of chine hulls or displacement hulls may be computed in the third module using the well-known Savitsky and Holtrup menon methods respectively. A number of parameter checks are carried out to warn you if your hull, loading condition, or speed range fall outside of the applicable ranges for these methods. Finally, the weight and cost module allows you to assign weight and cost properties to any or all of the objects in your model. These properties can come from a library of standard materials that you create and take the form of a weight density, for example kilograms per square meter for surfaces or kilograms per meter for curve objects and a cost density that is broken into material cost and labor cost. As an object is modified, its weight and cost update accordingly. A specific weight or cost value may also be assigned to an object. The resulting weight, center of gravity, and cost totals are available in the standard report which may be exported to Excel and can be used as input to the hydrostatics and stability module. Okay, now on to some quick demonstrations. For a more detailed look at these capabilities, please view some of our other videos. The first thing to do in ORCA is to set up some of the properties. For example, you may want to put in your project title, your company name, and your logo file for use on all of the output in ORCA 3D. Next is to set up your unit's preference. Rhino handles the length units and ORCA 3D handles other units such as weight, speed, area, and so forth. You can select from one of the standard systems or you can define your own system. Next is the model orientation. Some of the analysis routines in ORCA 3D need to know which direction in the Rhino coordinate system corresponds to forward and which direction corresponds to up. Finally, you may want to set your fluid type for your hydrostatics calculations. That's done here, seawater, freshwater, or other, where you can define your own. And finally, I'll turn on ORCA viewports, which simply redefines and renames the standard Rhino viewports so that the bow of the vessel will be pointing to the right. Let's look more closely at creating hulls in ORCA 3D. Hulls in ORCA 3D are NURBS surfaces. They can be created using ORCA's various hull assistants, 
created by starting with a flat sheet of NURBS surface and then moving the individual control points to shape the surface. Created using any of Rhino's many surface creation tools such as sweeping and lofting or read in from other programs that create NURB surfaces. It's important to note that all of ORCA's functions will work with hull surfaces from any of these sources. Now we're going to create a hull using one of the ORCA hull assistants. You can see in the hull assistant library there are a number of different types of hull assistants. We'll select the sailboat assistant and open that. And you can see there are a number of different parameters for defining the hull shape. Length on deck, beam on deck, and so forth and a separate tab for various shape parameters. I'm going to click the preview hull box so I can see the hull surface in the background as I shape it and I'll also preview sections which gives me a set of stations and a design waterline and you'll see as I change these parameters such as changing the length to 12 meters uh, using the slider to change the beam you can see that the hull shape is changing in the background. Let's give it a little bit more canoe body draft. Now we'll go on to the shape tab, give it a little bit more rake to the stem, and narrow up the beam at the transom. So you can see the hull changing as I vary these parameters. And you've actually got quite a bit of control over the shape of that hull. Once I've got these parameters set to the values that I like, I can save those settings so that I can come back to that as a starting point later and I can create the hull. So it's created the hull surface and it's also given me a simple deck surface and transom surface. In addition to that it's defined a set of stations and a design waterline but I'd like to have a different set of curves cut through that surface so I'll select my hull surfaces and go to the Add Sections dialog. First thing I'll do is remove the ones that were created automatically and now we'll define our own sections. So we can create stations, buttocks, water lines, diagonals, inclines, and cants. We'll start with stations. And you can define their locations either by typing in a list of values or entering a spacing or a number and a start and an end location or some combination of those. In this case, I'll check the update bounding box so it fills in the overall uh, dimensions of the model for me as the starting and ending, and I'll put in a spacing of one meter. We'll move on to buttocks. I'll use a spacing of 0.3 meters, and we'll do the same for water lines. By right-clicking on stations, I can remove, preview their locations, or set their color. So let's make the stations green. We'll make the buttocks red and the water lines blue. By default, the stations go on a rhino layer by their section type, which I can change the name of the layer here, or each section can go on its own layer and here I can change the prefix for those layer names. The remainder of the layer name comes from the actual value of the section's location. For now we'll do layer by section type. And here is my hull model with my sections cut through the surface. Now it's unlikely that the hull surface directly out of the hull assistant will be exactly what you're looking for. So of course like any uh, surface in Rhino you can turn on the ORCA control points and select one or more points and move them to do some further editing of the shape. And you see the sections are updating in real time as I make those changes. Once you have the hull shape finalized, you might want to do a lines drawing. So we'll select lines drawing. And there are a number of options here having to do with uh, automatically labeling the curves, drawing the axes, drawing the border and title block, and so forth. So we'll just accept these defaults. And here is my 2D lines plan. 
The next step is to create a table of offsets. And it's going to open Excel and put in a table of offsets with waterline half breadths on one worksheet and buttock heights on the other. The next step is to run some hydrostatics. So I'm going to select my hull model and go to Orca 3D Compute Hydrostatics and Stability. The first step is to define the flotation condition. Orca gives you multiple options for this, either a weight and center of gravity or a sinkage trim and heel, and you may do multiple conditions at one time. You can also do some combination of these, for example, a weight and a trim and a heel, weight, LCG, and heel, and so forth. We'll begin with the sinkage. We'll do a single value. And I'm going to check the box for mirror about center plane. And we'll add a plane that represents the water surface. And simply click, click Calculate. You'll see here the plane that represents the water surface and the sectional area curve. We've also got the report with a summary page. We've only got a single condition in this case. But we can go down and look at the details for that particular condition. And this will include the sectional area curve. If we'd like to see a writing arm curve, we can specify that right here and give it a range of heel angles. And now when I go into my report and go to the details for that condition, I'll see a stability curve as well. So what if we want to do multiple conditions? We can enter a range of sinkage values separated by commas. And if they're evenly spaced, you can use the ellipses format for that. There's a tooltip here to help you understand how that's used. And hit Calculate. And this time, the summary page will show a list of those conditions that I've run. And now you can see the curves of form, much more complete data. And then we can move on to the detailed information for each of those conditions. In this case, we ran 51 conditions. If I check the Use Custom Conditions box, I can see all of the conditions that I've defined up here, and I can edit them in these fields. I can add conditions. I can change their type from fixed plane to free float, for example, if I would like to enter the weight and center of gravity. And then I can calculate those conditions. And you'll see on the summary page a list of the conditions, and they're sorted by displacement. You can also output the data to a CSV file so that you can work with it in Excel. And you can transform the model to the resultant condition so that the z equals zero plane will represent the resulting water plane. You can see that there's a lot of flexibility in the way that analyses can be run and in the types of output. Also, because ORCA's calculations are based on the surface mesh rather than a station-based description, it's easy to analyze monohulls, multi-hulls, and non-ship-like surfaces such as offshore platforms. It's even been used for non-marine shapes such as a waterproof iPad case. It's forgiving of minor gaps in the model and does not require that you have a closed model as long as naked edges don't become submerged during the analysis. 
The design condition lets you define the surfaces and the flotation condition to be used in the computation of design hydrostatics without having to go through the hydrostatics dialog each time. It allows you to turn on real-time hydrostatics and sectional area curve and is the default condition used in the calculation of resistance. So I'll select my hull surface, go into stability and define design condition. And again, I can define the condition either with a weight and a center or with a flotation plane. I'm going to mirror about center plane since I've only got half the hull modeled. And I'm going to check real-time hydrostatics and real-time sectional area curve. If you have target values for your sectional area curve, you can enter them here. OK, now to compute the hydrostatics in that condition, I only need to click on the uh, design hydrostatics icon right here. And here are the results of that analysis. So as I'm working through the design, anytime I make a change, I can just click that one button and get the hydrostatics calculation at that flotation condition. Also, you see here the real-time sectional area curve and real-time hydrostatics with the default hydrostatics value shown. Using values, you can select any four hydrostatics values that you'd like to see while you're editing the shape of the hull. So again, I'll select a control point, and you'll see now as I move that point, not only is the surface and sections updating, but also the sectional area curve and the hydrostatics values. As we saw earlier, ORCA can predict resistance curves using either the Savitsky method for planing hulls or the holtrop menon method for displacement hulls. So I'll begin by selecting my surface, then selecting the appropriate method. And here we see the input dialog. Most of the information concerning the mass and geometry of my model has been computed based on the design condition that we just discussed. If you'd like to change these, you can select Manual Override and then change any of these figures. Next step is to put in your speed range, including the speed increment and the design speed. You have the option of outputting to the CSV file. You have the option of inputting a design margin and propulsive efficiency. Remember that we're predicting the resistance curve, and in order to get an estimate of the power, you can add on these multipliers. Finally, you can export the data to programs like SwiftCraft and NavCAD in order to do a more detailed powering analysis that would include the effects of a propulsor and appendages. So I'll click Calculate, and we'll see the report. It echoes back your input data, does a parameter check to make sure that your hull form falls within the valid parameters of this method, and then finally our results. Included in the results is a sensitivity analysis to show how various hull parameters affect the drag. A relative weight is given as well as direction on how to change the parameter to decrease the drag. Next, let's look at ORCA's weight and cost module. The fundamental idea with this module is that you can apply material properties to objects in your model, be they points, curves, surfaces, poly surfaces, or solids. You define the material properties in your material library. For points, they're simply the weight and cost of an item. By the way, you don't need to use both weight and cost. If you're only interested in weight, for example, you can ignore the cost information. For other types of objects, you enter a weight and cost density. For example, weight per unit length for curves, per unit area for surfaces, and per unit volume for solids. The weight and cost for an object are then computed based on the object's properties and the material properties. For example, the length of a curve and the weight per unit length. The center of gravity is also computed. So, as your model changes, your total weight, CG, and cost can be updated. Material properties are defined in the material library. Here you can enter and edit weight and cost data for points, curves, surfaces, and solids. 
The next step is to assign a material to the objects in your model by selecting the object or objects and using Assign Weight Cost Properties. Two options to note here. Point materials can be assigned to any type of object, not just points. But in that case, the weight will not change as the size of the object changes. Also, a fixed weight, cost, and CG may be assigned, but again, these will not update as you edit the object. Usually, though, you'll be assigning a material property that matches the type of your object, and the weight, CG, and cost will update as that object is modified. As you work through your model, you can select items that have weight cost properties or those that do not. This makes it easy to see which items still need to have properties assigned. By selecting Manage Weight Cost Properties, you can see a table of the objects that have weight cost properties, which also shows a summary of the totals. You can disable them so that they won't contribute to the weight and cost calculation, edit their properties, clear the material properties from the item, and quickly add a point with weight cost properties to your model. Next, you can run a weight and cost report. There are various options for what should be included in the report and how the items should be grouped in the report. The first page shows the weight properties, the next page shows the cost properties, and then you see a list of the stock materials that were used in the report. The report can be printed or exported to PDF, Word, or Excel. You can export your material library so that you can pass it along to other ORCA users, and the merge function allows you to read in a library from somebody else. Finally, recall that the weight and CG data that is computed from your model can be used as input to the hydrostatics calculation. So that concludes the overview of ORCA and its capabilities. I hope you'll watch some of the other videos and explore our website at www.orca3d.com. There you can download an evaluation copy of ORCA 3D, which will run fully functional for 15 days and will give you a chance to explore ORCA on your own. But you're never really on your own. ORCA is known as much for the technical support behind it as the technical capabilities within it. Our staff of Naval Architects is always happy to assist you, so send any questions to support at orca3d.com. Thank you for your time, and I hope you'll find that ORCA 3D will fit your needs. Mm -hmm.